Hello everyone, I am Rohan Gupta and we are from group 19. So we are here to present a research paper on EZBFT protocol which is Decentralizing Byzantine Fault Tolerant State Machine Replication. Coming to the content of the paper, we have introduction, then system model, protocol overview, protocol design and we'll go to the evaluation and conclusion and finally we'll uh, present our critique to the paper which is weaknesses and improvements uh, to the easy BFT protocol. Coming to the introduction, there are two types of failures in a distributed system. One is the crash failure, which occurs when the servers are stopped or crashed. And the second one is the Byzantine failures. This can occur if the servers are malicious or if the hackers are trying to hack the servers or uh, the servers are behaving abruptly or uh, arbitrarily. So what is an SMR or state machine replication? From the lectures, we can say that these are replicas. It is a technique to tolerate server side failures and to maintain high availability of nodes. And in this particular uh, replicas, all the nodes maintain the same state and they ensure that the same sequence of client commands are executed. And uh, they do employ consensus protocols in achieving the same. What are the applications of CFT and BFT? CFT is used in a large single enterprise organization but BFT is used when there are multiple entities involved. There are some challenges with the uh, existing primary based BFT SMT protocols like PBFT and ZZWA. When I say primary based protocols, it means that there is a primary replica present uh, which it acts as a leader of all the other replicas. So coming to the challenges, there is a scalability problem because when the number of nodes is increased, time and communication overhead to reach the consensus also increases. There are some latency issues because the number of communication steps in these type of protocols is huge. So there are some latency issues and the being a primary being the leader uh, replica, it is a single point of failure. And these type of protocols also do have lower server set throughputs. In order to overcome the challenges discussed before, authors have proposed a protocol named as easy BFT. Let us look at the uh, characteristics and outcomes of easy BFT. So it is a leaderless protocol. There is no primary replica as in the previous uh, protocols and every replica in the system processes the requests from the client and there is there are lesser number of communication steps. So uh, there is less uh, latency and higher throughput and it is highly efficient for WAN deployment which are uh, spread across huge geographical spaces. Like if the clients and servers are located across the geographies, then this uh, easy BFT protocol is highly efficient. So Coming to the outcomes, it significantly reduces client-side latency by a whooping of 40%. So it is a drastic decrease uh, in the client-side latency, which is very essential for the easy BFT protocol. And it distributes the load across the replicas and it tolerates faults more efficiently. Now the system model. There are some assumptions. So a Byzantine fault model is being considered. It is an asynchronous system, but the message can never get lost. And cryptographic signatures are available and for communication message passing is being followed and replica identifiers are R1, R2 and Rn and the requirements uh, 3F plus 1 replica nodes are required to tolerate F Byzantine faults and here it is assumed that there are no faulty clients. Now coming to the protocol overview, there are two types of protocols, a fast path protocol and a slow path protocol. Fast path protocol is used when all the replicas are correct and it requires 3F plus 1 correct nodes and a slow path protocol is used when there are faulty replicas. This tolerates uh, F Byzantine faults and it requires 2F plus 1 correct nodes. How is easy BFT able to achieve this? Speculative execution. So replicas wait for validation from the client before committing. So replicas they speculatively execute the result and then pass the message to the client and when the client receives the messages from the replicas it compares them and then passes the message saying uh, asking the replicas to commit and then after receiving the commit uh, message from the client it is then that the replicas actually commit the changes here the client is actively involved in the consensus process and because of uh, no leader in this particular protocol. This avoids the higher load on a single node. Uh, coming to the terminology, there are some terms associated with this paper. The first one is command interference, which is similar to serial inequivalence. It means that two commands are interfering when the result of two commands is different, when the two commands are executed in different order. It is similar to the serial inequivalence concept taught in the class. 
Second one is instant space. Instant space is associated with each replica. It is the sequence of slots where the client commands can be located in this fashion. So instance number i is the tuple of replica identifier and a slot identifier. If this is the instance space of a replica R1, then this particular instant, the, the number of this particular instance is i is equal to uh, replica 1 and slot 1. So coming to the instance owners, it is used to assign an instance space to a replica. The owner of RO's instance space is given by this particular formula, which is ORO mod n, where n is the number of nodes. Uh, coming to the dependencies, D is a set of all the interfering commands that should run before the given command or mes uh, uh, message. That means if L1 needs to be executed before L2, then dependency of L2 is the set which consists of L1. Coming to the sequence number S, it is a number which is being assigned by the command leader, which is the local replica to break the cycles in the dependencies. Let's talk about protocol design. In EasyPFT, there are two types of communications. One is fast path protocol, the other one is slow path protocol. Fast path protocol is used when there is no failure of replica and contention. In protocol design, the author provides a diagram to illustrate the protocol, but we found it a little bit difficult to understand, so we made one by ourselves. In the beginning, the client will send the command to the closest replica. This replica will be called as command leader. The client also starts a timer when sending the message. The command leader will produce a sequence number and dependency based on its knowledge. In this example, because the command leader because the command leader thinks there is nothing need to do before L1, so the dependency is empty. After that, the command leader put this information into the message and send this message to all replicas. This message is called spec order message. When the other replicas receive this message, they will update the sequence number and dependency based on its knowledge. Then they will do speculative execution and reply to the client. This message is called spec reply message and it includes the spec order message and the result of speculative execution. In this example, other replicas think that there's nothing need to be done before L1, so the dependency and sequence number are still the same. When a client receives the same spec reply messages from all replicas, it will reply commit fast messages to all replicas. Commit fast message includes the commit certi certificate. The replica could use commit certificate to prove that they follow the order sent by client. In the end, replica commits its speculative execution and do final execution. Let's move on to the slow path protocol. Slow path protocol is used when there's a command interference or failure of replica. At first, it's the same in fast path protocol. The client sends the command and starts a timer. The command leader forwards this command to the others. Then there's the difference between fast path and the slow path. When the client receives more than 2f plus 1 reliable messages but less than 3f plus 1 same messages, it starts to run slow path protocol. In this example, because other replica thinks that L2 should run before L1, so it updates the dependency to L2 and send it back to the client. So the client now receives less, less than 3F plus 1 same messages. But why is 2F plus 1? It's because BFT can only tolerate F failed replicas. So now the client receives different dependencies. The client will decide the final order. But how the final order is decided? The client will draw a graph and use topological order to form the final order. If there's a cycle like the example in this slide, one says that L1 should run before L2 and the other one says that L2 should run before L1. The client will use the sequence number and replica identifiers to break the cycle. So the client decides that L2 should run before L1. Then the client sends this order to all replicas. This message is called commit message. Likewise, Commit message also includes the commit certificate. Once replicas receive the commit message, some of them will need to roll back the speculative execution. Then they will do final execution and send a commit reply message to the client. The commit reply message includes the result of final execution. 
When a client receives more than 2F plus 1 messages, the slow path protocol is finished. So here we provide an example to illustrate how slow path protocol can deal with Byzantine failure. In this example, RepaPath2 is a Byzantine failure replica, C1 and C2 are command interference. At first, client 1 sends the command C1 to its command leader, replica 1, and client 2 sends the command C2 to its command leader, replica 4. Once command leaders receive the message, they forward these comments to other replicas. But for unknown reason, the messages from replica 1 to replica 3 and 4 and from replica 4 to replica 1 and 2 are delayed. So only replica, re replica 2 receives C1 and replica 3 receives C2. Then replica 1 and 2 do C1 and reply to client 1. Replica 3 and 4 do C2 and reply to client 2. Now the delay is over. Replica 3 and 4 receive command C1, Replica 1 and 2 receive command C2. Based on Replica 3 and 4's knowledge, they will tell C1 that C2 should be done before C1. Likewise, based on Replica 1's knowledge, it tells client 2 that C1 should be done before C2. However, since Replica 2 is a Byzantine failure replica, it tells client 2 that C2 should run before C1 although it runs C1 and then C2. So now client 1 receives two messages saying that C1 should run and then C2. Two messages saying that C2 should run first and then C1. On the other hand, client 2 receives one message saying that C1 should run and then C2. Three messages saying that C2 should run before C1. Then they will break this cycle based on sequence number and replica identifier, which we discussed before so they will still reach the same final order. In this example, it proves that even when replica 2 is a Byzantine failure replica, the client can still receive a correct message from another replica if there is less than F40 replicas. So they can still maintain the same execution order. But what if the command leader is a 40 replica? ECBFT deals with this by owner change protocol and EasyBFT detects faulty command leader by trigger order changes. Like we said before, if the client receives more than 2F plus 1 reliable messages, it will run slow path protocol or fast path protocol. But what if it receives less than 2F plus 1 reliable messages? The client will start to doubt that the command leader is faulty, not sending messages to others. So the client will send the same command to all replicas. This message is called request message, and it includes the information of the command leader. When other replica receives this message, it will compare the timestamp inside the message and the timestamp of this client inside itself. If the timestamp of this message is smaller, it will reply the cached response to the client, saying that this is an old request. Uh, like this example, the replica has a timestamp regarding client which is 1. And it's bigger than the timestamp of this message, so the replica replies cached response. On the other hand, if the message is the latest version, the replica will send a message to the command leader to request the spec order message. This message is called resend request message. If the replica doesn't receive a, a response from the command leader, it starts to execute the owner change protocol. The other situation is that what if the command leader is a Byzantine faded replica? So it might send different spec order to different replicas. And in this situation, the client will be able to detect, will be able to know it. But how? So the client will check the spec order message inside the spec reply message. And the spec order messages must be signed by the command leader. So the other replica cannot fake it. So if the client finds out that there's a difference between spec order messages, then the, then the command leader must be a faulty command leader. So the client will start to produce proof of misbehavior message and send it to all the replicas. Let's move on to the owner change protocol. So when replica receives proof of misbehavior message or more than F start owner change messages, it will start to run owner change protocol. At first, 
it will stop receiving messages from the original command leader. Then it will decide a new instance space owner and command leader. The new instance space owner is decided by the original owner number plus one and use the same function we mentioned before to find the new command leader. Then the replica will send owner change message to the new owner. When the new owner receives more than F messages, it will consider itself as the new owner. The owner change message includes the executed and commented comments about the original command leader. The most important thing that the new owner should do is to recover the execution order of the original command leader. So to reach this, the new owner will collect all owner change messages and decide a sequence based on two conditions. The first one is that if the execution order is committed, it must have a commit certificate. So the new owner can trust this execution order. But what if the order is only speculative executed but not committed? The new owner will need to collect more than F of these messages to prove that this execution order is also true. So in the example of this slide, the new owner receives committed L1, which satisfied the condition one and more than F executed L2 and then L3. And this message satisfied condition two. So both of them could be trusted. The new owner will decide the final order to be L1 and then L2 and then L3. After deciding the final order, the new owner will send this final order to other replicas and owner change protocol is done. Let's move on to correctness to discuss about the properties of EasyBFT. The first one is non-triviality. In the class we learned that non-triviality in asynchronous system means that at least one initial state can lead to different outcomes. In here, it means that the request must be issued by a client. The rep class cannot make a request and then execute it. This is achieved because the client must sign on the request, so the replica cannot fake the request. The second one is consistency, which is safety we learned in class. Safety means that bad things never happen. Bad thing in here is that if one replica commits an instance that includes comment C1 and the other replica commits the same instance, must only include comment C1. This is avoided in EasyBFT because the same instance is only created by the same replica. And the other bad thing is that the execution order is different between replicas, and this is also avoided by slow path protocol. The third one is stability. It means that the new owner must commit the command which was committed by the original owner. And this is achieved by owner change protocol like the example inside this slide. The last one is likeness. It means that good thing should eventually happen. Good thing in here is that requests should be committed when no more than F failed replicas. As we mentioned before, if the client receives more than 2F plus 1 messages, it will start to run slow path or fast path protocol. If it receives less than 2F plus 1 messages, the owner will be changed until it can receive more than 2F plus 1 messages. Let's look at the evaluation part. Coming to the setup, EasyBFT and its competitors PBFT, FAB and Ziziva are implemented in Go 1.1 and GRPC is used for the communication and HMAC and ECDSA algorithms um, are used for the message authentication and uh, deployed the systems in different AWS regions using EC2 infrastructure. So coming to the definition of contention, which means that interfering commands, it is also defined as the number of, uh, it is the percentage of requests that access the same key concurrently. In practice, contention is always between 0% and 2% and only EasyBFT is actually affected by this contention concept. So coming to the client side latency results. So in this experiment, there are four replica nodes in four AWS regions, that is Virginia, India, Japan, and Australia. The primary is at Virginia and clients are co-located at each place. In PBFT, we know that there are five communication steps. In FAB, there are four and Ziziva has three communication steps. So if you look at the results, so we can see that uh, if the primary is located at Virginia and the client is also located at Virginia, we can see that EasyBFT um, FAB, PBFT and Ziziva, all the four almost have the same latency because there is no advantage of EasyBFT over here. But when the client is in Japan and the primary is in uh, Virginia, we can see that PBFT has the highest latency and then uh, FAB has the highest latency and then Ziziva and then EasyBFT. So we can see that there is a decrease of uh, almost around 40% in the client cell latency for the EasyBFT protocol. 
So authors propose to move the primary when there is a Byzantine failure in a primary in a primary waste protocol. This actually increases the latencies due to the frequent movement. And what is the effect of Byzantine replicas? In primary based protocols like uh, PBFT and ZZWA, a primary uh, which is affected by a Byzantine failure actually stops the progress. But in a protocol like EZBFT, whenever there is a failure, it ensures that the correct replicas are continued using the slow path protocol which is discussed. So whenever there is a timeout, the owner change protocol is triggered and the pending requests will be taken. The next experiment is related to client scalability. The protocols were deployed in the four AWS regions as discussed in the previous slide and uh, the client side latencies were measured per region by varying the number of connected clients. So if you look at the graph, if you look at the result, we can see that uh, ZZWA has an exponential increase uh, in latency as the clients are increased. But whereas the EZBFT protocol maintains the low client side latencies even when the number of clients is increased, it has a very low uh, client side latency. The next experiment is related to the server side throughput. So what is a throughput? It is the number of requests processed per second. Given that the primary is in Virginia, whenever the clients are placed at Virginia, EZBFT performs slightly better because there is no advantage of, for the EZBFT. But when the clients are placed in other regions, other protocols do not have an advantage, but EZBFT outperforms in throughput by four times, almost like four times. This is this is the graph. So the reason the reason being all the replicas, irrespective of the region, they process all the requests from all the clients concurrently. Coming to the conclusion, coming to the conclusion, so the motivation of the paper is to address the challenges of the existing BFT protocols like PBFT and ZZWA in geoscale deployments. And the architecture proposed or designed is EZBFT, which is a leaderless BFT protocol that offers three step uh, consensus and minimizes the latency. And uh, the EZBFT delivers classic BFT protocol properties, including non triviality, consistency, stability, and liveness, as discussed in the previous slides. And we have seen that uh, in the evaluation part, like it reduces the client cell latency by 40%, which is huge. Now, we would like to answer the major questions which were asked in the class. So, what is the problem or main insight of the paper? The problem stated is the PBFT and ZZWA, which are primary based protocols, they have high client client side latency and low server side throughput and they're not scalable enough. And the main insight of the EZBFT protocol which is being proposed is it has lesser communication steps and it's a leaderless protocol and it is scalable, reliable and fault tolerant. And what is the result obtained? As discussed before, EZBFT has achieved around 40% lesser client side latency and EZBFT has obtained four times the server side throughput in comparison to the other protocols. And it also guarantees all the correctness parameters like non-triviality, liveness, etc. And how do we evaluate the system? We evaluate through uh, experiments as discussed in the previous slides. Uh, like in experiment one for the client side latency, we deployed the four replicas um, at Virginia, India, Japan and Australia. And uh, PBFT, FAB, ZZWA and EZBFT are implemented and uh, client side latencies were measured. And in the second experiment, uh, server side throughput is measured as the number of clients are increased. We would like to present our critique to the paper. So we have observed some weaknesses and challenges in the paper. So the paper assumes that the clients are not faulty, but whereas in real life clients can be faulty. So the paper fails to address the problem. And the second thing is messages can be lost, making the system not reach to a consensus. Also, there can be a message flood. That means when there are too many messages uh, passed, the, the system becomes complicated and complex. And uh, when the distance between the replicas and the clients is high, then it can lead to higher latencies. For example, let's say all the replicas are sitting in the US region and the clients are sitting in the India region. So uh, due to the huge distance and huge number of client and replica based message communication, it increases the latency. And uh, processing on low performance clients can be increased when a lot of replicas are present because uh, clients have to do the validation on their part. So if the client has a low performance CPU or the processing unit, then um, there can be an issue if there are a lot of replicas and lots of validation is, needs to be done. So we would like to suggest some improvements to the paper. We are proposing a medium path protocol with region validators. When replicas receive commit messages from the client, they can communicate with each other to check the client correct, client's correctness. As per EZBFT, it is not yet implemented because the faulty clients are not considered in uh, 
in this particular protocol or in this particular paper. We can have a separate category of nodes named as the region validators, which means that for each region, there are, there are designated region validators or nodes which are designated the task to verify the consistency of spec reply messages which are received from the replicas of that particular region. So this task is being done by the clients uh, in the present EZBFT protocol. But if we follow this region validators node uh, idea, this might decrease the latency of the EZBFT further. So uh, that's all we have. Thanks for listening.